Praise the Lord. Welcome to Cross Time with Pastor Curtis. I'm Pastor Curtis Hutchinson here in the studio at Crossway Church in Queen City, Texas. Glad to be with you this morning, gathered around God's precious words of life, light, and liberty. We're in the great letter of 1 Peter. We're in chapter 4, and uh, <coughs> we're nearing the end of this chapter and I don't know if that'll be today or the next session or when it'll be, but that's where we are. So grab your Bibles. Again, this is 1 Peter chapter 4, and this is part 9 today of this fourth chapter. And what we've already discovered, the Holy Spirit has shown us that the overall context of this first letter, I won't say anything about the second letter yet, we're not there, but the overall context of this first letter is suffering for righteousness' sake, suffering the way of the cross, suffering uh, as a Christian. And the, 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 we are learning that to reign with Christ is found as we suffer with Him, as we heard that, uh, that scripture lasts in the last session. And that Paul told uh, Timothy that in 2 Timothy chapter 2, I believe it's verse 12, that if we reign with him, I'm sorry, if we suffer, we will reign with him. And that's really not talking about one day we will reign with him. We, we live lives now that reign by grace. Grace reigns through righteousness. So, so in, in suffering, we reign. And we brought out in the last session how Christ, while he was suffering on the cross, was taking away the power of death that the devil had. He was triumphing over all principalities and powers, making an open show of them, Colossians 2, 14 through 16, while he was on the tree, on the cross. So he was reigning in his suffering. And when you and I maintain our faith in our Lord and his suffering for us on the cross then we will find our place, I'm talking about our experiential place in reigning with Him. Now, this is what most Christians don't really, don't really like when we first start hearing about the cross and why most reject it for the way of living for God is because it doesn't have this outer appearance of, 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 of triumph and, and victory. I'm talking about, the you know, it, it, it doesn't allow us to uh, lord over people or triumph over people. And many times, many times in our Christian lives, it looks like we're just defeated or we're just, uh, you, know, a, you know, allowing this to be done or that to be said and all these things they come toward us and we look like we're not very much and that is the really the picture of Calvary because the one who had all power think about this now the one who had the power to lay his life down and to take it up again went to the cross to suffer for you and me and in that suffering, he was, and the Bible says that he was crucified through weakness. Second Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 13, verse 4, that tells us that Christ was crucified through weakness. And he had to be because God's grace is, 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 is God's strength made perfect in our weakness. And Jesus at the cross in his suffering 
By grace, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, Jesus, by the grace of God, that means God's strength being made perfect through His weakness, tasted death for all men. See how powerful and beautiful that is. So when you look at the cross, had you been standing there that day, uh, you would have thought that whatever power he had before to do all he did before, obviously it was gone now. But in all reality, all that he'd ever done before put together could not hold a candle to what God was doing in him on the cross that day. And see, that's what we really, and I'm talking about you and me. That's what our flesh really, even as Christians, we really, we'd rather have all the miracles and all the healings and we'd rather be known for Mr. Pentecost and Mr. or Mrs. That. But what God wants us to be known as is followers of His Son. That without the denial of self and the taking up of our cross, there's not going to be any experience of righteousness and holiness, and without holiness, no man can see the Lord through us or our ministries. We really want the miracles and the power and the manifestations and the healings, and who wouldn't? And we still won't ought to see all of that. But let me say again, all that Jesus did before the cross could not hold a candle to the power of God that was manifest, the love of God that was manifest when it appeared like there was no power of God. There was no love of God. If God loved him, he would save him from that. If he had power, he would surely save himself. Do you get my point about, and this all has to do with where we're going today in this last, uh, this fourth chapter of First Peter. That if we don't learn to arm ourselves with the mind of suffering, then there can be no mind renewal. I want to say that again. If we don't learn to arm our minds with that of suffering, the preparation to suffer, the expectation to suffer, not going out and causing the suffering, but the expectation that it's going to happen when your faith is in the sacrifice. Peter even uh, talks about, you know, uh, don't think it's some strange thing when you're, these fiery trials come your way because they're going to come. You're expecting them. We're not out there trying to make them come to make us look like we're, you know, martyrs or something. But no, no, no. We, that's the last thing that we're signing up for. But the first thing we're signing up for, hallelujah, is to keep our faith anchored in our Savior and His suffering on the cross for us. For there, and we'll see it today, and I hope you'd get your pencil and your paper ready to write down. I'm going to give you several, several scriptures today to jot down and to look at them. I won't be reading them to you. All, but I will be sharing where they are concerning the arming of our minds being of one mind. And in other scriptures, it's called the same mind. So uh, I hope that you'd get ready uh, to write these things down here in a few moments. But again, we, 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 the, you know, we have to be in expectation, prepared for, ready as a good soldier for the consequences of our faith. The consequences of our faith. This is where, you know, we choose at times to put the cross down because it looks like we might have to suffer here instead of being equipped, prepared, and in expectation to suffer and really being able to rejoice 
when we suffer, listen, if that's not the way we're going, if that's not the expectation and the arming of our minds that's taken place through faith in the sacrifice of Christ, then when it comes time to be, oh, maybe a little embarrassed or ridiculed, criticized or whatever the case may be, there's a great tendency there to to become ashamed and to put the cross down at least for a few minutes till we can get around this or we can get past this or or it makes it or, or we or we can become deceived and pretend that we're all of the same mind and of the same you know the the one mind but we're not until we can just get around this and let me say this, and I won't give the names, but some t- few years ago, I told this young man when this big thing blew up, I said, let me say to you that uh, th- it might appear that everything has settled down, but it hasn't, not unless they were, uh, their minds were changed about uh, this truth of Calvary or unless your mind is changed to go their way away from slowly being desensitized and moving away from the, the, the narrowness of the truth of the cross, if, 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 neither, if neither mind join the other mind, then it's not over and, and eventually there will be more of the blow-ups, more of the whatever you want to call them, problems, issues, eruptions, it doesn't matter. And, uh, you know, That's just the way it is. The importance in the church of being of one mind, the same mind. That doesn't mean we're all in the same Bible verse, but it is of utmost importance. And we cannot walk together just because we're Christians. I I don't care what anybody says. Christians can not, and you see that by the thousands of denominations by the, the even among the same denominations the uh, you know countless divisions and separations that are there uh, and it's all all really over a disagreement about scriptures for the most part, I think it's really basically all about that division and schisms and there's not any unity and and the reason, Ultimately, why is because we're not of the same mind. We're we're not of one mind. And I'm going to give you some scriptures today concerning being of one mind and that being the same mind. And if we can, let's back up this morning again to the first verse in this fourth chapter of Peter. And, you know, don't dare for a minute say that it's impossible for all Christians to be of one mind, the same mind, because God has told us to be of one mind and the same mind. Therefore, when God has told us to be something or to do something, the possibility is there. It's there, but it will always require, it will always require the the one object of faith. And I can't say this enough, and the church doesn't really know it. It doesn't, it's really not being talked about. But there's only one faith, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. And because there's only one faith, that means there's only one object of faith. That's right. There are many things we can believe God to do because of our faith in the one object, but, but all these things we desire to see God do to us or for us or through us, we can't put our faith in those things because there's only one object of faith that God has given the lost world or the saved, blood-bought church to put their faith in, and His name is Jesus Christ, that being in His death. The first time we placed our faith in the death of Jesus, the Holy Spirit immersed you into the place your faith was. And as long as we fight the good fight of faith, not to say we still believe the cross, of course we do, but to trust in Christ and our union with Christ in His death there, then we will see the Holy Spirit continuing 
to move mightily in our lives, to, to, to allow us then to, to, to be functioning as the part of the body of Christ that we are individually to have this one mind, this same mind. If, if the cross of Christ is literally and consciously and deliberately not what our faith is in from our hearts, we can never be of the same mind, one mind. It cannot happen because our faith is misplaced. When our faith is literally in the death of Jesus, then we can walk together because only there can we be agreed together. And what does the Bible say through the prophet Amos? If can, can two walk together if they're not in agreement? And the answer to that is no. It's really a question with a statement. We, you can't walk with anybody, whether you're lost or spiritually saved, you can't walk with anybody who has a different object of faith. It's, it's an impossibility. The wrong object of faith is what causes every issue in the church. Get that. Every divorce in the church takes place because the man or the woman or both are not trusting in the death of Jesus. Because if we were, then it wouldn't be all about us and what we wanted. Come on, somebody. If we were trusting in the death of Jesus then our affections and lust, <coughs> which the Bible says in Galatians 5, already have been crucified, we would be in the experience of that and it would be about others instead of our self. You see, as long as the object of our faith is not the cross of Christ where self is removed, then we can't help but be about ourselves. Amen. Look out for number one. Who's going to take care of you if you don't take care of you? What you need, son, is a greater self-esteem. And all these things sound good, but they're not good, and they eliminate us from grace because if we're living for self, we're not living for Christ. And it's the wrong object of faith. It's the wrong object of faith. All the, the, the fads that come into the church that, oh, this is the, oh, this is it. I feel it. Oh, yes. Look at the scriptures. Yes. Oh, 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 yes. This is it. And no, there's nothing wrong with the scriptures until we start trying to apply them to something other than what the Holy Spirit always applies them to first so they can be applied, applied to your heart. And that is the cross of Christ. We cannot be in unity as a body of Christ without our faith being in that which made us the body of Christ. So let's get into this this morning. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Did you see that? The same mind of suffering. Arm yourselves with the same mind of suffering. The preparation to suffer. Being equipped to suffer. A soldier who goes to war knows if he, even, if he does make it home, he is going to suffer inevitably. If you go to war and you're fighting, literally fighting in the war, you're going to suffer. Well, I got news for you, Christian friends. There's a war. It's not against flesh and blood. Read Ephesians 6. You'll see what it is we're wrestling against. The battle is the Lord's. And oh, how we like to say that and then make a mess of things. But the battle was won 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary. And the more we hear about that 
battle that raged, that battle that was won by the great conquering king, the Lord Jesus Christ. The more we hear about that, the more we will be being equipped with the same mind. The less we're hearing about that, the less we will be being armed with that same mind. My friends, if we're not hearing about the great redemption plan from Genesis through Revelation in every message, hear me again, in every message, then we must believe that we're just automatically going to just, just always be ready. Now what makes us ready, hear me, we don't make ourselves ready without the Holy Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit. Now, I know the book of Revelation says the bride has made herself ready. But when you read the scriptures where that says that, it's talking about the fine linen garments of the saints, which is their righteousness, their righteous acts. That's the acts of the Holy Spirit, my friend. And he doesn't work outside the new covenant law of being in Christ Jesus. We're all in Christ Jesus, but we're not all walking in Christ Jesus. And none of us are walking in Christ Jesus every moment of the day. Now, I want you to understand that. You ha Listen, a soldier in the military, I was a Marine years ago, and the training is never ending. You're not trained for six months and, and, and then never you, you, you don't have any, no more training ever, ever. Training is never ending. And it's the same way in this spiritual army that we're in as good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. The training is never ending. The arming of our minds is never ending. When we're caught outside the process of arming our minds with the same mind Christ had, talking about suffering, then we're going to be caught off guard. And the potential of being carried away when we're caught off guard is very great. Who wants to live a Christian life as a POW? Who wants to live their Christian life as a prisoner of war? I want to remain the prisoner of Christ with the victory and the triumph of Christ that's available to me in experience by the Holy Spirit in and through me. The training is endless in this life. When we fall away from the hearing of faith, meaning the focus of Calvary, then we fall away from the place of equipping, the place of preparation, the place of being ready-minded. We, we can never stop hearing the Scriptures in the light of the one who said that He is the light and the Scriptures are about Him. You must never move away. And let me say it the right way. We must never allow our flesh to move us away from the focus of Calvary, our boast only in Calvary. And let me say something again that I had no intention of saying. I did not know I would say it, but it really is something very special. We must learn to strive for the faith of the gospel. That must be what we're striving for moment by moment. And here's what I was going to say again. When we are caught off guard, when our minds are not being prepared to suffer, when we're caught off guard, the potential is great to be carried away. Not by men, but by the lust of our own flesh. The longer we refuse to deny self and take up the cross, the greater the potential is to move farther and farther away from it. I personally know this by experience. 
I know others who chose self for a moment and now they're gone. Nowhere to be found. They chose self for a moment to put the cross down to avoid the suffering as a child of God that automatically comes for a child of God. And now, let me say it again, the longer I allow self, flesh, to guide me, the greater the potential is and the really the reality is I'm moving farther and farther away from where I really need to be. So I needed to say those things before we get into this too deep this morning. Because you know as well as I do, all it takes is one thought that allow that moves us away in the direction of going after something fleshly. And to go after it, we must put the cross down. To go after anything that's ungodly, unrighteous, we must put the cross down to do it. We don't, we're not denying self and taking up our cross and going after fleshly lust. No, my friends. That, that, that never has happened. We might be saying the word cross. We might be saying the word Jesus while we're going after the flesh. But it's not going to work out for us. It's not going to work out for us because we've left the status of the experiential place of having one mind with the one body of Christ, that same mind. Listen, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, the mind of Christ. Equipped to suffer, prepared to suffer, going through suffering. Let's read this again. This is very important, especially for those of you who the Lord has awakened under righteousness and He's been able to bring you back to the place where suffering for righteousness is inevitable. And many times it will be by those who are quoting Scripture to you left and right, but they're not seeing them in the light of Christ crucified. Therefore, they're not seeing properly. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself, soldier. This is your armor. Arm yourselves with the same mind. Because he that suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. He that suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Our flesh was crucified with all its lusts and affections on the cross 2,000 years ago and our faith in that sacrifice, in that suffering of Christ allows us now in this moment and every moment if we will fight to continue our striving for the faith of the gospel to experience a mind that is equipped and armed to suffer and to be able to rejoice in it. Not just to put on a happy face or a smile or to to pretend we're all good, but from the heart to rejoice with the joy of the Lord in our hearts, no matter what expression may be on our face. Get this now. The reason is, watch verse 2, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. This is talking about you and me being born again. If you missed the service yesterday, uh, we brought out in the Scriptures how the child of God is no longer in the flesh because of the cross. We have, we've been removed out of the flesh and placed in the Spirit, Romans 8 and 9. If you miss that message, please go back and listen to it. You can find it on the YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316, or the website, thecrosswaychurch.com. You and I, 
as children of God, we're, not, we're no longer under the law, but we can live and act as though we are. We're no longer in the flesh, but in the Spirit. The Bible says if the Spirit of Christ dwell in you, and He does, all Christians, but we can sow to the flesh and walk after the flesh even though we're not in the flesh. Do you understand that? So when the Bible here says that he no longer should, should live the rest of his life, the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. The cross allows us to live according to the will of God. But the will of God for men, women, and boys and girls in this age, in this life now, inevitably will bring suffering. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, All they that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There is no way around it. And if we are not being armed with this message, the only message that arms the child of God is the same message that brought us into that which armed us which is Christ crucified, Christ suffering for us. Hallelujah. So uh, watch this now. So that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh, being delivered out of the flesh and put in the Spirit, but to the will of God. We no longer live in the flesh and we don't have to walk after the flesh which is all based on the lust of men. There's nothing that's of the flesh that is not the lust of men. All the fleshly desires is the lust of men. We're not talking about uh, to feed our flesh breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We're not talking about things we do in our flesh like working and, 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 and enjoying our families. We're talking about depending on our flesh, being bound by our flesh, which is that which hinders the will of God. And the cross of Christ and our faith there in moment by moment. Not just because we got saved, things don't automatically work out by themselves. It's not autopilot. Still, it requires faith. It requires you and me being of one mind, the same mind, and learning what it means to arm ourselves likewise with the same mind Christ had when He suffered for us. Hallelujah. Do you get that? So let me read, and I hope you get your pen, your pencil, your paper, and you're ready to write these scriptures down. Uh, The places in the New Testament where we find the phrase, the two words, one mind. And it's talking about the body of Christ being of one mind, being the mind of Christ, being that mind that is armed and prepared for suffering because of their faith. Get that. One mind. Here comes the scriptures. If you'll write them down and look at them later, there's not that many. There's one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, I think. And I'll give them to you so you can have a, a, a more in-depth time with the Lord in your Bible study concerning the one mind, listen very carefully, that our Savior and our Father expects to find in the church. In the church. Are we of one mind? Am am I right now of one mind with everybody that calls themselves the church? Such as, just for one example, the Catholic folks, Catholicism. Am I at one mind with them? No. Because they don't really know the Bible and they don't trust in the words of the Bible. And outside of the words of the Bible, faith cannot come. Faith cannot come. And if faith is not coming, that means I can't have the right mind to begin with. Amen. 
So and, and these people over here who are teaching you're not going to heaven unless you're baptized in water, then I can't be of the same mind with them because, listen, their focus and what they're striving for is not the faith of the gospel. And the faith of the gospel is the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us, Galatians 2 and 20. And if that's not where our faith is, we can't be of the same mind. That's not where folks' faith is that believe you have to be water baptized with certain words spoken over you as you're going in the water. And you, you can't be of one mind if you believe that, that Mary was divine and that some man can swing some beads around your neck and, and, and you do say certain words to be forgiven of your sin. That we, that's not scriptural. That's not truth. That's not the gospel. So we can't be of one mind. And let me say this before I give you these scriptures this morning. Our Heavenly Father and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, expects to see the, the mind of Christ functioning that one mind, that same mind, that mind equipped to suffer because our faith is in one place, the suffering of our Christ. Get this now. Romans 15 and 6. Let's look at it. Romans 15 and 6. That you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, if, if we don't... Get this. If we don't have the same mind, then we're not all glorifying God. None of us may be, or some may be, but we can't all be glorifying God if we're not all of the same mind. That one mind, the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's get back to this now. If I get back over here where I was... Uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 11. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. All these things, all this, these things are not experiential for the body of Christ or even a con one congregation if they are not of one mind. Everybody okay? Everybody doing good this morning? All right, well, I'm not going to be able to read all of these, but I'm going to give them to you like I said I would, and you can write them down. Philippians 1.27. Now, I don't know that perfectly to quote it, but I know there it uses the phrase one mind, that we all be of one mind. And it says there, one spirit, one mind. And it says in Philippians 1 and 27 that <coughs> when we're all of that one mind, the manifestation is we're striving together for the faith, <coughs> the faith of the gospel. So for us all to be of one mind, whether it's one family, one congregation, or the body of Christ all over the world, if we're going to be in the experience of having this one mind that God has given us to have, there's not more than one mind. There's not more than the same mind. And if we're all going to be in experience of the mind of Christ, the mind we were given as the body of Christ. If we're all going to be found in experience doing our part as the functioning part, 
that we're all called to play in the body of Christ, we got to be of this one mind, this same mind, the mind of Christ, armed, equipped, and prepared to suffer because of our faith is in the gospel, the death of Jesus. And we're found striving together for the faith of the gospel. That's what's so precious about this great move of God that's taking place where God is awakening His people unto righteousness, bringing them them back to the focus of the sacrifice of Christ. Why? Because there is where he is in communion with his people. There's where the fellowship, only fellowship that exists with Christ takes place. There is where we receive instruction. There is where we are equipped with that same mind. Hallelujah. So Philippians 1.27, Philippians 2 and 2, 1 Peter 3 and 8, and of course, where we are here <coughs> in uh, 1 Peter uh, 4, 1, but that phrase here in chapter 4, verse 1 is not one mind, it's the same mind. So let's add that to our next phrase. I'll give you the scriptures for not as many verses there with the phrase the same mind, but... He, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 can be added to this list. And this list contains Romans 12 and 16 that says, Be of the same mind one toward another. Now, one mind toward another. Watch. Mind not high things high things, things that are exalted. The only way this can be prevented is if our faith is in the one who humbled himself and became obedient unto death on the cross. Listen, mind not high things, but condescend. That means associate with the humble, but condescend to men of low estate, be not, be not wise in your own conceits, your own opinions, your own estimation. This, this is an impossibility without a deliberate and conscious faith in the sacrifice, the sufferings, the death of Jesus. It won't happen. It, even when there's appearance, an appearance of it, if it's not faith in the sacrifice of Christ, it's not the Holy Spirit bringing it to pass. And that's why it's nothing more than us trying hard, working hard, and it won't last. And things will eventually erupt uh, no matter where you are, no matter what you think you have going on. If it's not the Holy Spirit bringing about the fruit that is the fruit of your faith in the sacrifice of Christ, whatever's going on there ain't going to last. It's not going to last because it's us just trying hard and eventually we get tired of trying hard when things don't go all the way our way. If they're not going all the way our way, we'll put up with some things for a season, uh, but, but it's only because we're trying to get to the place where all things are our way, uh, but if we're being equipped, prepared, and armed with the mind of suffering, then we're, we're learning to reign with our Savior. And again, if we're outside the process of suffering with Him, then we're outside the process of reigning with Him. That is one more powerful yet scriptural statement. If we're outside the avenue of suffering with Christ, then we're outside the, the avenue of reigning with Him. This is the reason we must learn to arm ourselves with the same mind Christ had. Amen? So here we are again. Let's look at some more of these. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10 says... Now I beseech you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. And my note here says to have a uniform testimony. 
A uniform testimony. What makes all of our testimonies uniform? Well, the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And our testimonies of things that we might have been bound in, that we were bound in, can all be different to a degree. We were all bound in sin. And the blood of the Lamb is the only thing that overcame all of those things that were destroying us and brought us out of the flesh and put us into the Spirit so that we no longer have to live through the lust of men to carry out the will of men, but we can now have the freedom and the liberty to carry out the will of God. So beautiful is that. But watch this in 1 Corinthians 1 in chapter 1 and verse 10. Now I beseech you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Wow. Wow. Is that happening in the church? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And that there be no divisions. Is it God's will for there to be any divisions? Absolutely not. How can it be prevented? That we all be found speaking the same thing. Watch. And that there be no divisions among you. But that there be, but that you be perfectly joined together in is always speaking of a location. In the same mind and in the same judgment. In the same, this is the church all over the world, every nation, tribe, and tongue can experience this right now. Doesn't matter if they're teaching out of Genesis, they're teaching out of Second Kings, they're teaching out of the book of Revelation. It makes no difference. The Word of God is the Word of the cross, the Word of righteousness. And while we are speaking the same thing, it means that we're all testifying prophetically of the Lord Jesus Christ because it's His mind we've been given. Let's read this again. Now, I, but this is a powerful scripture concerning us being of one mind. And let me say this again. Unless our minds are being equipped and armed with the mind of Christ that He had to suffer for righteousness' sake, then we can in no way experience, no matter how we teach it and how we preach it, no matter how much we talk about mind renewal, when mind renewal is taking place according to the Scriptures, Romans 12 and 2, Romans 12, 1 and 2, when mind renewal is taking place, then the mind is being armed and equipped with the mind of Christ, which was the mind to suffer for righteousness' sake. If our minds are not being armed to suffer, they're not being renewed. Our mind was made new when we were born again. So if we're going to experience the newness again today, renew again today, my mind, oh Lord, I've got to keep going moment by moment to the renewal place, which was Calvary. Hallelujah. Let's read this again. Now I beseech you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all, all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together <coughs> in, the, in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now I don't have this. <clears throat> written down, but as the Lord stirs my heart, let's move over to 2 Corinthians, isn't it chapter 5? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, that says, For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge. Because our judgment is this, that if one died for all, then 
all were dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth, that means from now on live unto themselves, the lust of our heart, the lust of the flesh, to carry out the will of men. Get this now. And that he died, Jesus died for all, that they which live should no longer live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So the love of Christ constrains us because our judgment is this, that if one died for all, then all were dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not from henceforth no longer live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Everybody's still doing good this morning. I hope you are. I hope the Lord's giving you what you need this morning. I know He's offering it to you. This one last Bible verse for this phrase being found in it, the same mind. And it is Philippians 4 and 2. said I wasn't going to read these, but you might as well. Let's read Philippians 4, 1 and 2. Therefore, my brothers, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown. Oh, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Stand fast, stay put where you were when you entered the Lord. That means faith in His death. Stand fast, don't move. Don't move from that. Galatians 5 and 1 tells us the same thing. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Don't move. Then he says this, get this now, I beseech Eudeus and beseech Syntic that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Now I'm sure if we were to search this out, there's a possibility that we might find if the information is here, and I don't know if it is or not, that Eudeus and Syntec, however you say these folks' name, they're not from northeast Texas, so I know I'm butchering their names very badly. I beseech these two people that they be of the same mind in the Lord. So obviously, they weren't of the same mind in the Lord. The same mind can only be experienced in the Lord. Remember the new covenant law. For the law of the spirit of life, which is the Holy Spirit, which is God, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed me, delivered me, not only from the law of sin and death, but because it delivered me from the law of sin and death, my position in Christ, that is, my faith in the sacrifice, that is, I can now experience the will of God that is carried out by faith in the sacrifice of Christ, the Holy Spirit giving that legal right to immerse me into Christ and then to begin a good work in me. And if we keep our faith there, He'll be allowed to finish that good work in us. Praise be to God. Watch this, read this, that they be of the same mind. There is never a time in the in the church where God does not desire all of the body to be of the same mind. One mind. And that is, let's read it again. We're short on time, and I know we didn't get near the end of this chapter and close this chapter out today, but this was very important to the Lord for me to give to you today. And for us to know this, and to see these truths written here for us because the opportunity to reign with Christ is 
as experiential in our lives as we're willing to arm ourselves with the same mind Christ had to suffer for righteousness sake. As you are willing to contend for the faith, not some congregation, not some preacher, not a denomination, to the degree that you are willing to contend for the faith. There's, the reason the Bible says the faith is because there's not two. The Bible tells us that in Ephesians 4 and 5, there's one faith, meaning there's one faith object of faith. We're told what that is in Galatians 2 and 20. The faith that we live by in this flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God. Here, 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 here is revealed what the faith of the Son of God carried out for us, for us to be able to have it, um, the measure of it, and live according to it. He loved us and gave Himself for us. That's the object. And it, no, no, it's not just God's love. It's what God's love carried out. The giving of His Son. If these folks just go around talking about the love of God without the focus of the cross, that's why they can't ever overcome the situations that come into their life as a test and they're overwhelmed, they're shocked, they're surprised that this is happening to them. But as Christians, we will be tried, we will be tested. And as I brought out earlier in another session, not just to see if we'll keep some faith, but number one, to see if we'll keep our faith in the only place it works, which is the death of Jesus. And if we will... There, my friend, comes the greatest of all suffering. But with it comes the greatest place of reigning with our Savior. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. 2 Timothy 2 and 12. If we suffer, if we avoid arming our minds with this mind Christ had to suffer for us in the flesh, what He did, it was His suffering. Our faith is not in our suffering. Our faith is in Christ and His suffering unto death on the cross for us. And when our faith is there, it's an automatic, inevitable thing. You're contending for the faith there. And my friend, that brings criticism. That brings resistance. That brings persecution. The Bible declares it. They that will live godly, not in some way they make up, but all those that will live godly, here's the mystery, in Christ Jesus, meaning faith in His death, shall suffer persecution. Not because I go to church, not because I read my Bible, but because I'm choosing to live godly in Christ Jesus, meaning I'm learning to be determined not to ever allow my faith to be in anything other than, my boast in anything other than the cross of Christ. There, my friend, all the things that you suffer because of that faith, not because of the big pieces of stupid that we go do that will inevitably, inevitably bring the consequences also of some suffering. But all the suffering that we experience because of our place in our hearts becoming determined to know nothing other than Christ and Him crucified to fight the good fight of faith, meaning to fight to keep our faith there in that one place, inevitably will bring the suffering. The question is, will you allow the Holy Spirit to arm you with this mind of Christ? Will you have more going on in your life than a church you go to, a, a chapter or two a day you read, a, 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 a prayer? Those things are beautiful and wonderful. But the question is, as we close today, are you hearing the Word of God 
in the context it was written, being that of righteousness. God says all the words of his mouth are in righteousness. Proverbs 8 and 8. And his righteousness is revealed in the gospel, Romans 1, 16 and 17. This, my friend, is why we are to be found striving together for the faith of the gospel. For only there comes the fruit of the righteousness of God because of the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you being equipped? Is your, is your mind being prepared and equipped to suffer for righteousness, for your faith in the cross of Christ? If it's not, then it's not in the place of mind renewal. It's not in the place of being renewed. The renewed mind is the mind that is equipped. Let's say it. The renewed mind is the equipped mind to suffer because of, for righteousness' sake. To not be talked out of putting the cross down. To not be talked out of the focus of Calvary by men who are so eloquently able to quote Scripture. And even the deception is so strong that men can talk about the cross and talk you out of trusting wholeheartedly every moment in the cross of Christ. The deception is so rampant today, my friends. So I encourage you, maybe listen to this teaching again. I hope you wrote the Scriptures down. I hope you are more than just a funnel that something runs through, but that it has time to be ground and grafted into your heart. And that your heart is toward Christ in the right way and enough to allow Him by His Spirit to equip you for the suffering that is in inevitable because of your faith in His cross. Because there in that place is not only mind renewal, but it's where we reign with Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's been a great session again. This has been 1 Peter chapter 4 part 9 on this 19th day of June. I hope that you'd pray for us. We're praying for you. And I do pray that on this day, on this day that you'd find the touch of the Lord on your body, your soul, and your spirit. And if the Lord encourages you to pray for us, please pray for us. If you're listening, I'm sure that He'll do that. And if the Lord stirs your heart to be a part of this ministry in a greater way, then I encourage you to do that by sowing, giving an offering to the Lord for what He's able to do through this ministry for you. Some have listened to us for years and have never given the Lord anything for what He's doing through this ministry. I encourage you to sow into the place where the Lord is feeding you and growing you and blessing you and equipping you for the days ahead and for His coming. You can do that at thecrosswaychurch.com or you can simply text the word GIVE to the number 903-231-5950. And don't forget about Determined Youth Camp. Determined Youth Camp next month. It's not too late to sign up. It's not too late to get your application filled out. Your money sent in. It's $125 per camper. That's a wonderful place to sleep, a wonderful place to worship. You'll hear the truth of the gospel all the time you're there. And that includes all your food and everything else. So if you need more information, contact Pastors Clint and Lindsey Bass, Christ Community Church, in Palestine, Texas. You can find them on social media or you can simply contact me. And if you're listening to me, you can put a, a message in the, in, in, the, in the comments or you can email me at curtishutchinson at att.net. Till I see you again, God bless you. We love you and are praying for you. And until I see you again, stay determined to know absolutely nothing 
but Christ and Him crucified. And we'll see you then. Reserved for